G'day guys, welcome back to another Fair Dinkum Dinkum Guide. I'm Dave. And I'm Kyle. And this one we're going to have a quick little update on all the news, everything that's happened in the last 16 days since it's released. So uh, Dinkum came out on July 14th, so it's only been out for about 16 days. It's had seven hot fixes at the moment, but honestly, I was just doing some research, I think it's only had six hot fixes. Because he's got hot fix one, then three, then four, five, six, and seven. So I think either two was just unannounced or it was just there. So uh, the hot fix one came out on July 15th, just some little fixes and stuff like that. And um, he seemed to indicate that it was just a one-man band. Then his name's James. So James the dev, the lead dev, the only dev. He's actually doing a pretty good job at the moment. So every couple of days he's been releasing a hot fix. Um, just little things here and there and everywhere and they've been good quality of life improvements and mostly bugs I should say rather than quality of life just bug fixes um, so far which has been really good so um, we won't go over them too much there we'll sort of just link them all down below but there's been about seven hot fixes or six depending on how he counts them um, and I think the last one is really good he's uh, added credits um, to the main screen of the game and the last hotfix because he wants to give, you know, some credit to other people, which is, uh, you know, a pretty good idea. So he also has released a uh, roadmap to Dinkum and I believe this came out two days before he launched it. So the first update is called Housewarming, which is buildable guest houses for multiplayer and new wild animal. So I think the biggest thing is that you and I, Kyle, we play multiplayer on everything just about all the time. Generally, suddenly will you see one of us playing by ourselves on this game. But, you know, we'll generally play together. And there has been a lot of issues of, like, you know, only the host can place buildings or do this and do that, you know. But, like, it needs to be more open for the second or third or four players too, yeah? There's definitely some issues that we've found with co-op. Even just... Um the second player trying to join the game from either the Steam menu or the multiplayer option inside of the game menu has caused issues. The only way we've reliably been able to do it is to use the IP to connect to the host. Um, oh, essentially like a LAN join though, yeah? Well, I imagine you'd probably be able to do it if you had like network forwarding and stuff like that turned on over the internet but we are doing it across LAN so I know the, the LAN IP of your host machine but yeah you, you, it's, like, it's not like you need to LAN to play you can still use a Steam one it's just buggy like sometimes the host has to send invites to individual people well, rather, rather than just joining in though yeah no the most reliable way I've found of getting the second player to join the host is to close the game completely go into your Steam friends list, click on join game, and then that will open the game, but it still won't join. It'll just open the game to the main menu where you've got to go to multiplayer, select your character, then click on the person's game join, and then it will connect. But if you just open the game and try that process, it doesn't work. And if you don't have the game open and just try the Steam process, it won't connect either. Yeah, fair enough then, fair enough. Anyhow, um, so in his roadmap in the second one, he's also got the Bloomin' Spring as the next one. Um, so it's a new seasonal event, a new NPC can move to the island, and new activities and items. So I guess he's left that pretty general, so you know he can add and do whatever he wants to do f for when it comes to that time, rather than being set in stone that you know it's going to have this animal or this building in specifically it'll be more free to add what you want honestly i think that's a clever idea because um you've just released a game you don't want to overcommit on future content especially when um you're still dealing with what's going to become new bugs um with the player base increasing you're going to find new things that you probably hadn't noticed before even with the beta testers this did game did go through a beta test phase um but yeah as your player base increases you're going to find more stuff that would have been missed and you don't want to over commit on working on future features and adding stuff in when you don't really know what you're going to be adding yet yeah another thing i've sort of noticed with his roadmap is that there's no like dates or you know coming in autumn or coming in like december or anything he hasn't set any 
goals of when they will come in, which is probably a good idea because he's just like, you know, new indie game out. He's just trying to probably fix all the bugs and everything that's getting reported that, you know, you can only find on mass when you have lots of people playing it. And it's one of the top, best top sellers on Steam at the moment, which is doing really good. So his next one, his next update on his roadmap is uh, 3, which is the Summer Sun, a new seasonal event uh, and some other stuff to be done. And the update 4 will be Breezy Autumn, again, another seasonal update. Uh, so all updates should include new fish, bugs, crops, recipes, and clothing. Now, we were just discussing about this before. It'd actually be really nice to have some summer clothing when it came to summer. You know, we can get down into the... Uh, Budgie smugglers go down to the beach, have a swim around with the sharks, you know, like we normally do in Australia here. Some some seasonal themed clothing, which I'm sure he's got planned or he's got some ideas of what he wants to introduce as he goes along. One animal I'd really like to see is a bunch of snakes into Dinkum, you know. Being Australia's got, what, seven of the ten's world deadliest snakes, it's probably... Probably only fair enough to add in some snakes to the world. Because at the moment, there's only a couple of animals that will attack you on site in Dinkum. So there's like crocodiles and cassowaries and sharks. So the only, or and jellyfish too, I guess. But they're the only ones that sort of see you and then come up and attack you. That's, that's still 50% of the creatures in the game though. Uh, yeah, but they're not, you know, like I will run across more dingoes than I will of... Um, Anything else? Oh, and Tassie Devils too. The Tassie Devils in there will attack you on site. But, you know, um, I would have thought when we first started playing the game and we saw the bunch of uh, dingoes, I was actually wary of them. Like, oh, maybe they'll come and attack me. Because I'd be more worried about a uh, a dingo attacking me than I would of a Tasmanian devil, really. Uh, I don't know. Tassie Devils are known to be fairly aggressive. Yeah, but I haven't heard of like or seen or know many people that have been attacked or bitten by a Tassie Devil compared to dingoes. You know, dingoes, I hear about it way more though. Well, that that's because only Tassie Devils exist in Tasmania, a tiny proportion of the country as opposed to dingoes that are everywhere in Australia. Yeah, no, nah, fair call, fair call. Cassowaries too. I can't remember the last time I've heard of a cassowary attacking someone, but I know it, it happens, <laughs> like, you know. It, no, no one was reported like, oh, what happened? Oh, I got attacked by a cassowary. What is that? Uh, it's a big black chicken with a horn on its head that <laughs> headbutted me, <laughs> you know? So um, so we got a few suggestions that we, so we were spitballing around, some that we sort of pulled from the Steam um, chat and whatnot, but we sort of like had a look around. So... A bit of a pause button seems a common thing for people wanting to um, add into the game rather than just uh, being able to sleep. There's no pause. Um, so people like, they really scream out for a pause button when, you know, you need to go away from the computer for five or ten minutes. Like, I reckon that will help out a fair bit. Uh, another thing that they would, uh, people have been asking to add in, or more of what we've been asking to add in as well, is like some prices when selling stuff. So when you hover over an item, uh, it doesn't say anything about from what it is, like especially when you're at John selling it. You won't know until you sell that one item individually or at the end when you sell like 20 different items, it will give you the total cost of all 20 different things. But it'd be nice to like hover over and see like what this one particular item's worth by itself, whether it's worth selling or just holding on to to craft for something, you know? Another thing that you brought up before too, Kyle, that I thought was quite interesting uh, sort of like sleeping inside a house versus sleeping in a uh, sleeping bag or a swag. You want to elaborate on that one a little bit? Um, yeah, I just think that there should be some benefits to sleeping inside as opposed to sleeping outdoors. So, like, what sort of benefits are you sort of thinking about? Uh, just a, a boost to like the health and energy if you sleep inside um, instead of outside. So when you wake up in the morning, you have a higher pool of health and stamina because you had a nice comfort sleep rather than sleeping outside in a swag, you know, in the rain or something. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that would be a good quality of life feature. I'd like to see that one added in too. One thing I was actually thinking about before that I sort of hadn't mentioned to you, you know your old Crocodile Dundee movie where he like puts his thumb and his pinky out at the animals and make eye contact with them, like sort of mind controls with them. That that if you could do that, that would be a cool feature of like you know Tazzy Devil goes to attack you. You know, 
hand out, sort of like start my controlling it and it stops, sells down and it turns around and walks away. Something like that would be cool. Like, um, I don't know how that would be implemented, but it'd be a nice feature to have. It'd almost be like a stun effect, I guess. You could just like put your hand out, stun, and then, you know, gives you five seconds to run away or something. Um, I haven't found it particularly hard to run away from anything in the game, but it'd be an interesting mechanic, I guess, yeah. Yeah, oh, maybe when they add more or different animals in, that would um, definitely might be a good feature or something, just something to spitball at. The, um, the next thing I sort of really would like to see is I have this issue of being impatient and I'll just be talking to someone to get their daily task and I'll just left-click away and left-click away and next thing I know, I've denied their task and I didn't even know what it was. It might have been something easy or it might have been like something a little hard or that I can't do at the time. So... Being able to, like, if you deny a task, just to go back and talk to them and re-accept the task. It doesn't even have to be a different task. It can just be the same one. Um, But I know, like, you know, if you spam it away, you skip past the task, deny it, you can't go back and do it until the next day. And if they're just a visitor on the island, you can't really get their task until they come back. And it could be two or three in-game days later until you get them back. So, you know, it'd be much better to have to be able to re-accept tasks that you deny it doesn't have to change just to be able to do it or you could just slow down because someone worked hard on that narrative and <laughs> you've come along and you're like i don't care ignore skip look i know they worked hard on it but when you've read it for the 15th time that day you you, you just want to skip 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 and get going right fair enough well Looking at the updates and suggestions in Steam there, I actually saw that one person had suggested to like lock the minimap so it was always facing north. And then one of the fixes, it actually became a um, a feature. So it's now you can lock your minimap to always face north rather than be free floating. So the developer actually does look at all these stuff, which is really impressive and really good that this one man band can do it. So, you know... Hats off to him. He's doing a fantastic job, this fair income dude, right? Yeah, 100%. Well, that's all we sort of got to talk about today, guys. Um, So we're probably going to do an update maybe once a week or stuff like that. And we're going to talk more about this. We want to hear your suggestions of what sort of animals they should add in, what sort of features. And if you've got any major bugs or whatnot, just hit us up and we can definitely like make a video on it and hopefully get some attention on it. But there is the Steam uh, forum sort of thing that the developer does look at and go through. Um, So, you know, definitely add them into there as well. Anyway, guys, this is another Fair Income video. We're the KD Gentlemen. I'm David. I'm Carl. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk again soon.